Hey everybody, this is Anna Huthmaker with Huthmaker Violins, and I want to say to you, Happy Make Music Day! So, in case you're not familiar with it, this is an international celebration of music. It happens on the summer solstice. This also happens to be Father's Day, so Happy Father's Day to all you dads out there. Um, and this is actually kind of double special because I'm basically a musician because of my dad. So, a Happy Father's Day to you, Dad, and um, I'm so glad you're here. We are doing a whole bunch of free lessons online um, just to spread the joy of music and spread some education. And this particular video I'm doing is actually all about how to take an audition. So taking auditions is something that's really interesting. We, we start doing it when we're pretty young. Maybe you've been playing a year or two years and you have an opportunity to audition for your local youth orchestra. Or maybe you've been playing for two years or three years and you have an opportunity to audition for Allstate. As we grow as musicians and as we get better and better and better, what happens is our auditions get more and more intense and more and more life-changing. So if you want to be a musician for your life, when you get to be a junior or a senior in high school, you start auditioning for colleges. You start auditioning for scholarships. And then, of course, let's say you go to college. Let's say you do your master's in performance. Now it's time to audition for that major symphony. Those jobs are few and far between. So you want to make sure that you can really, really knock the top off of an audition. So auditioning in general is really interesting, and it's very, very, very stressful. But I'm going to give you some tips and some tricks to make it easier and to be better at it. So, um... I just finished doing a video a little while ago um, on all about sight reading. And I just want to mention that really quickly because 99% of auditions will have a sight reading component in there. So I'm not going to really do a deep dive into sight reading in this video, but I do want to tell you that one and this one are, can be found after I'm done with it on the Hefmaker Violins YouTube channel. And um, if you have not really started studying sight reading and looking at it and getting better at it, I want you to go back and check out that video. Um, give me a few hours to get it up and running. But um, because when you do take these auditions, the last thing you want is something stupid like sight reading <laughs> to trip you up. So that's the first thing I just wanna put in that little mention that um, preparing your sight reading skills very, very important part of taking an audition. So when it comes to any kind of audition, the secret to doing it well is to practice it. Now that may sound kind of silly. You're like, well, I practice all day, every day. That's all I do. I take lessons and I practice. No, I didn't say practice the music. I said practice taking the audition. So one of the first things I tell my students is the best thing you can do to get really, really good at an audition is to do mock auditions. And that is to play for any stranger or person that scares you that will possibly listen to you. Now, you can make these as intense or as easy as you like. So I like with my private students, I make a, a, I do like a sheet of paper and on it I put simple things like tone and tempo and, and musicality and appearance and all these kind of things. And I make about 3,000 copies of it. And then at every lesson, at the end of their lesson, if they were preparing for an audition, we do a mock audition. I make them turn around a few times and take a few deep breaths and then play their list for me, play their piece for me, whatever they're preparing. Um, if they're doing sight reading, I make them do a quick sight reading excerpt. And I write down the stuff, I give them a score, and I hand it to them. And then we do the same thing again next week. Now, in a private lesson situation, that's really good practice. It's really good for them. They can start seeing where their weak spots are, what they need to practice on. But that is a much better exercise if you do it, say, for your with your parents or with a neighbor or someone who you're not used to playing in front of. So I used to tell my kids all the time, my students, I'd say, if the UPS driver knocks on your front door to deliver something from Amazon, grab them and say, hey, would you listen to my Allstate excerpt really fast? So the point being, if you can find a stranger walking around, grab them. If your mom's best friend comes over after a tennis game, 
ask them, say, Mrs. Smith, would you listen to my stuff really fast? It's gonna make your stomach crunch up and it's gonna make you nervous and it's gonna make you uncomfortable and you're gonna feel really silly. Guess what? That's kind of the point. So when you think about how you feel in an audition, you feel nervous, you feel scared, you feel unsure, you feel full of adrenaline. What you need to do is you need to repeat that feeling or recreate that feeling over and over and over. If you can do that and you can practice playing under the influence of all that, I promise you your auditioning is going to get easier and easier and your scores will get higher and higher and higher. So mock auditions are awesome. The more mock auditions you can do, the better. And I know if you're a young person, you're sitting here watching this going, I am not doing that. That's fine. But when you get a little older <laughs> and a little bit more desperate to do well on it, auditions, I want you to think about this and consider it. When your best friend comes over, play for them. You know, the people in your life love you. They're not judging you. But if they make you a little nervous, they're your perfect audience. I promise. All right, so when it comes to taking an audition, I will tell you that for students, you kind of fall into several categories and really what it boils down to is how serious are you? Now, you're all pretty darn serious. You're taking private lessons, you're studying, you're practicing. So let's also let's assume you're all pretty darn serious. But some of you are gonna be willing to take extra steps and to try and do better and better and better. One of the things that um, I do suggest in general is um, sugar and caffeine do actually do a lot to us physiologically. They make us kind of hyper and they make us kind of crazy. I'm like this all the time. I haven't had any sugar or caffeine. But I want you to imagine if your normal breakfast is a Krispy Kreme donut and a Coke, that's fine. But if you have that right for an audition and you are you throw a pound of adrenaline in with that sugar and that caffeine, it can really mess with your system. So um, for my kids that are serious but just medium serious i tell them you know try not to hit starbucks on the way to your audition if at all possible try to wait do that afterwards um for my kids that are pretty darn serious i um suggest that they give up caffeine and sugar for three days beforehand i think it gives you enough time to clear it out of your system trust me the adrenaline's going to do a number on you so better to have that not be fighting with you know oreos and a pepsi so for, I've had just a few students, but I've had some students who are very, very, very committed to doing well, and they've given up sugar and caffeine for a week or two weeks. That's pretty hardcore, but all of those kids went on to do really well. One of them plays in the London Symphony, went to Juilliard, so consider it. I'm just saying, consider it. So let's talk about the worst part of auditions, and that is your nerves. Nerves are, they are the bane of our existence because the truth is you can spend weeks and months, maybe a year perfecting your music. And when you get in there, it can all go to hell in a handbasket. Excuse my language. Let's <laughs> rewind that. It can all go into the garbage if your nerves, when your nerves hit you. Nerves are a fact of life. If anyone tells you they can tell you how to not be nervous for an audition, I, I don't know how that's possible. I was gonna say they're lying. Well, I won't say that, that's not fair, but I will tell you this. Nerves, adrenaline, that is a physiological response in your body and it just happens. You can't make it go away, so you have to learn to deal with it. And here's the very interesting thing. You can practice with nerves. So, you know, I talked about the mock audition. That's the first step of this. But one of the things that you've got to do before you get seriously involved in taking auditions is you have to take a physical inventory and you have to say to yourself, what does, what do nerves do to me? What does adrenaline do to my system? Because we're all different. Now, here's the thing. So I can tell you for me personally, so nerves makes my stomach crunch up really, really, really badly like this. And I breathe really shallow. I, like I have a real hard time taking a deep breath because everything inside's all crunched up. That's what nerves does to me. Um, sometimes if I get really good and nervous, my um, bow arm will get shaky. So I have other friends that get really sweaty palms. Um, I get friends that get what's called sewing machine leg. Do you know what sewing machine leg is? 
sewing machine leg is when you can't really see me but your, your leg just starts going up and down like crazy and if you're a string bass player and you're standing this is not good for your playing you know it's just a nervous tick our bodies do different things when that gallon of adrenaline gets dumped into them so the first thing you need to know is what does your body do so we go back to those mock auditions start paying attention where do you feel it when all of a sudden you have to play for a stranger um and once you write those down because there's different ways to approach each of those things so let's talk about what happens if you get short of breath if you get kind of up in your chest that's what happens to me and i'm getting kind of freaked out so the best thing i learned to do was to recreate that feeling so and the best way to do that i know this is sounds silly but set up your instruments set up your music and everything run outside and run up and down the driveway or around your house a couple of times and then come in and sit down while you're still <laughs> doing this and play i want you to force yourself to play uncomfortable when you've done that a few times, your body starts learning how to adjust to that. Your music is able to come out, your hands are able to do what you've been training them to do while your body is having this reaction to not only too much adrenaline, too much running around the house. So I actually took some lessons once with Gloria Jones from the Atlanta Symphony. She's an amazing bass player. And when she, she told me that when she took her audition for the Atlanta Symphony, you have to imagine, that this is the way the symphony hall is set up. You're downstairs, it's kind of like a basement area where the practice rooms are and you're warming up. When it's time to go, you have to go up this steep set of steps. It's pretty darn steep. And, um, and it literally pretty much dumps you out on stage. So you're warming up, you're full of adrenaline. You've got to go up the stairs, walk out on stage and play. Now, you heard me, this is an Atlanta Symphony audition. This is a major job. This is really important. Um, you cannot miss a single note. So she told me the smartest thing ever. She said when she was preparing for that audition, she knew that not only did she have to climb stairs and immediately play, but she had to do it carrying a string bass. So she would warm up, she'd practice, and then wherever she was in her home or wherever, um, she would run up the stairs with her bass, sit it down, and immediately play. And I thought that was genius. Ugh, but it sounded kind of hard. <laughs> Good exercise, but genius. Because once she had done that every day for several weeks or however long she did it, then that became a part of the audition process that wasn't going to mess with her. If you are, sorry, I think it's raining outside. <laughs> if you're the kind of person whose hands sweat, and get cold. So my friend Derek DeVelder, he is a string bass player and he plays in the Albuquerque or the New Mexico Symphony. And he once told me that that's like the thing that happens to him. His hands get all cold and sweaty and it's miserable. And so he is also a genius. See, I'm smart. I surround myself with genius friends <laughs> and I learn from them. He said what he started to do was he would get a bowl of ice water. And when he was getting ready to practice, he'd dip his hands in the ice water. He'd shake them off, but not dry them off. And then he'd sit down and he'd play his audition stuff. He could not stop his hands from getting cold and sweaty. But what he could do was learn to play a heck of an audition with ice cold, wet hands. It's pretty smart, don't you think? So the sewing machine leg and the shaky arm thing, it's really interesting. So we have adrenaline and everything is getting all stressed out and different muscles will start to shake. A lot of violinists and cellists will talk about this happens with their bow arm. They'll get that buzz when they're playing. For me, what I have found is what you've got to do is you've got to take tension and purposely put it somewhere else in your body, preferably someplace that's not really affected by your playing. So if you're standing up as a violinist and you're playing and your bow arm is getting shaky, I want you to think about tightening every muscle in your left leg as hard as you can, tense them up. I want you to think about pushing your foot into the floor as hard as possible. You're gonna lean on that leg. What you will find is all that stress and tension will go whoosh, down there. You can't necessarily get rid of it. It's there to stay until your audition's over, but try to put it at a part of your body that isn't gonna affect your performance. 
So um, for, I know this sounds silly because for a bass player, like I said, I'm a standing bass player. And if my legs get like that, um, you don't want to lock your knees because you could pass out. But I like kind of try and, and tighten the upper thighs as much as possible. And I like, just try and centralize that so that the rest of this works okay. So I'm trying to think what else you would have. Um, the shortness of breath, the shaking, the cold, sweaty hands. Those are the majority of things. If you have something else that happens in your body, I want you to think about it and think about what you can do to create it, recreate it at home. So the best thing though, let me just tell you, anything you can do to create an adrenaline rush during your practice session, this is the best thing to do. And I'm, I'm not kidding. If it means running around your house a couple of times and then grabbing your instrument and practicing, I want you to practice shorter breath. I want you to practice with adrenaline flowing through your system. The more you do that, the less likely it is to affect you when you walk out on stage for something that really matters, like a symphony audition. Now, when you do audition for most symphonies, I don't care if it's a youth orchestra or the Atlanta Symphony, one of the things that's very common is that you have usually a general warm-up room where everybody's together. This is something you have got to prepare for. So because the, I call it the warm-up room psych out, it is very real. So, cause two things happen, actually three things happen. First of all, there are musicians there that don't have your best interest at heart. They're trying to freak you out. And they'll do that by standing next to you and playing as fast and crazy as they possibly can. They're trying to get into your head. Um, the second thing is you're letting them get into your head because all of a sudden you're surrounded by what you think are the world's most amazing musicians and what in the world are you doing there and how did you ever think you could take this audition? You can see where your brain starts getting a little crazy. And third, and this is a very, very real thing, the energy in the room, if you don't understand that energy is a very real thing, let me just tell you, energy is a very real thing. The stress and adrenaline of all those people is something that you can actually feel. And you know what's worse than your stress and, and adrenaline? And you know what's worse than the friends sitting next to you, their stress and adrenaline? If you're a young person, it's the parents stress and, and adrenaline. Because you've also got the parents in the room. They're all freaking out. They all want the best for their kid. They're stressed out. So you have got to find a way to deal with all that energy. Now, the first thing I want you to know and listen to me closely, especially if you're young. So mostly when people go play in a, in a symphony audition, they know this stuff, but if you're young, what you're hearing around you is not real. When you're surrounded and all of a sudden every musician around you and you're in eighth grade and every musician just sounds incredible and amazing, that's not real. They're all eighth grade musicians just like you, but we get this thing in our head when we're playing and we just think we hear awesomeness over here and it's just, it's enough to kind of tear down your self-esteem. So the first thing that I want you to practice doing is deep breathing and tuning out, not paying attention to what's going on around you. Now, if some obnoxious kid comes within two feet of you and turns around and goes like that at you, they're trying to stress you out, they're trying to um, intimidate you, that's when you just laugh inside and you give them your very best Southern, oh bless your heart, because you know what they're trying to do and you turn away and you do some deep breathing and you try to tune them out. Now, there are four of the smartest people in the entire room and I want you to pay attention to who they are because those are the students that they claim the corners. If you see an empty corner in a warm up room that's full of musicians, you make a beeline for it because I want you to face that corner and I want you to just try and clear your mind and I want you to remind yourself, you've practiced hard, You've prepared, you've worked on your sight reading, you gave up, you didn't stop at Starbucks on the way so you're not full of caffeine, you're ready for this, that corner will help you. Now there's only four corners in a room, so if your mom or your dad is with you, they can help you. They can stand in front of you, they can hold your piece of music and you can try and create your own little bubble. I want you to breathe a lot, do not pay attention to any of those people around you. When it does come to that um, warm up room, I wanna give you a little bit more advice about that. Don't show up two hours early. No good can come of that. Um, you know, we talked about, I talked about that energy. Everyone's marinating in adrenaline. Everybody's freaked out. If you sit in there, it's like adrenaline stew. After two hours, you're gonna be a blithering, shaking mess. Show up, 
30 minutes before, 40 if you don't know where you're going, enough time. You will have practiced at home that morning or warmed up. You wanna get there with enough time to get where you're going, take a few deep breaths, warm your muscles back up, and then audition. Do not plan, a, this is not a time for practicing anymore. You're done practicing. You know, um, it's not time for running around visiting with your friends. You're too nervous for that anyway. So, um, so watch your time. Seeing people stand, sit there for a long time, it always breaks my heart because you know it's not gonna work out well for them. Originals, this is for the students in the room that are listening. So um, I want you to keep in mind, copyright is a very real thing. Legal music, having music that's legally yours is a very, very real thing. Do not show up to your auditions with music that's on copies. Um, if you do, make sure you have the original with you that you can prove you had it. Um, there's just been a lot of instances where here in Georgia, you're not allowed. If you show up for a student, like a middle school or a high school audition and you don't have uh, originals, they don't let you play. Um, so just make sure you have originals. If you're used to playing off of a copy, do not walk in with the original for the first time you've seen it and open it up. Make sure you've taken some time to play with it and you've transferred your fingers and bowing to it. So I just wanna make sure everybody has originals. Um, what should you wear in an audition? This to me is always a really interesting conversation because again, maybe a lot of your auditions are behind a screen. So if it's behind a screen, what does it really matter? For me, this is one of those things where it falls into the category of how serious are you? Um, if you want to make music and you want to be part of a symphony, then you want to dress the part. I'm not saying to go in a tux and a long black dress, that's not necessary, but showing up in your holy jeans and your old tennis shoes, it kind of shows a lack of respect for the process, a lack of respect for the job, a lack of respect for the work that you put into it. So I want you to consider that even if it's not, sorry, even if it is behind a screen, that you do not, don't go in your sloppy best. Go looking nice, have some, some pride in yourself. Um, so I will say this, it's kind of an interesting thing. Um, used to be, I haven't auditioned for a major symphony in a long time, so it could have changed. It used to be that they asked the women not to wear high heels, especially if it's behind a screen because the judges, they don't want to know if you're a girl or a boy, man or a woman. They just want to hear the music. So you don't want to, you know, click, 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 click across the stage, you know. I actually used to audition, um, sorry, judge Allstate. And there were always these boys that came in their baseball um, and their football Uniform is not the right word, is it? <laughs> Whatever you call it. Um, and it was so funny because they always were like doing an all-state audition, then going to play a game, which is so cool. And you know, just love somebody that's that well-rounded. But <laughs> you'd be sitting there behind the screen, you'd hear this click, 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 click of their cleats as they walked across the floor. So keep your footwear in mind. <laughs> I know that sounds silly, but um, but look nice. If it's not behind a screen, if they're looking at you, definitely look nice. You know, take out your extra piercings and, you know, your purple hair and everything. You want to really, you want them paying attention to the music, not what you're wearing, if at all possible. So, scoring. How does scoring work? So, normally at this point, if I'm doing this class, I'm talking to a bunch of students that are getting ready to take, like, an Allstate audition. Um, I'm not going to go into a lot about scoring because it's different for every audition you take. I'm going to tell you some very important points, though, that I want you to remember. The first is you need to fight for every single point. I have seen the difference between first chair and last chair in an orchestra come down to 10 points out of a 200 point scale. That's nothing. If you think about it, I mean, that is so, such a little measurement, fight for every point. I've heard of major symphony auditions where they had, they got to the final two people and they had this person play, then this person play, and this person play, and this person play, over and over and over until one of them missed one note. And they're like, okay, there's our winner. The truth is, you're in a very competitive world. The truth is, there's a ton of great musicians out there. You've worked hard, you wanna do your very best, fight for those points. Um, also, when it comes to scoring, musicianship is really key. But, you know, I talk about this in my sight reading class, so I would rather have somebody play beautifully musically 
with vibrato, with dynamics, and miss a note here or there than somebody that plays it perfectly like a piece of cardboard. So bring your best musical game. The scoring will reflect that. Your judges are musicians. That's the thing I want you to remember. Let's talk about those judges for a second. So, because judges are kind of fascinating, but especially if you're behind the screen, they're like these magical, mystical creatures. They're scary as all get out. Um, there's a good chance when you're walking out to your music stand and your chair, if you're gonna sit, that you'll hear them. You'll hear the papers wrestling, you'll hear them giggling, you'll hear them talking to each other. And that can really mess with your head. You gotta be careful, because before you know it, you're sure they're talking about you and they're laughing at you. Um, they're behind a screen. They're not talking about you or laughing at you. But they can take on kind of a life of their own if you can't see them. And I want you to remember that the judges are all musicians and they all came from where you are. I don't care if you're a sixth grader in your very first youth orchestra audition or you're getting ready to audition for the New York Philharmonic. The person sitting behind that screen has been where you are. They know how you feel. They want you to do well. I promise you, judges always have your best interest at heart. And especially the younger you are, those are teachers back there. If you make a mistake or something, they're like, oh, they, you know, they're sorry. They want you to do well. Believe it or not, they're on your side. Now, if there's not a screen and you can see their faces, maybe it makes it better. Maybe, maybe it makes it worse. Um, maybe they're not smiling. It's not because of you. Maybe they're worried about, you know, what they're going to have for dinner that night or something. Don't take it personally. Just remember what I just said. Your judges are there. They believe in you. They want you to do well. They're not going, they're not there to make your life miserable. So just take a deep breath and get on with the business of playing what you prepared. Um, so I want to talk kind of last but not least about results. So a funny thing happens to us, we're musicians, and not only do we work really, really, really hard, but our heart and our soul is tied up in us, in our performance and in how we do. And, um, and there's a lot of other people that are part of that, our families, our teachers and all that kind of stuff. But when we go and play an audition, if it doesn't go well, it can be quite devastating. Um, and let me tell you, I myself have blown auditions. I've done great auditions. I was first year in Allstate, aren't you impressed? I once played an audition that was so bad Honestly, that the judges came out from behind the screen to look at me. That's how bad I was. And I've done everything in between. To not do well can really emotionally do a number on you. So I wanna tell you I have three steps to, for what I want you to do if you leave an audition feeling bad. Now, normally I say if you leave an audition blowing it. If you blew it like I blew it, where I'm not even lying, they came out from behind the screen. It was an Atlanta Symphony audition. They came out from behind the screen. That's how bad I was. There's three things you've got to do. The first is when it's all said and done, you cry. Because the truth is you worked hard. You, you deserve to cry. It's an emotional experience. So you can shed a few tears. The second thing is you go get a chocolate shake. Because honestly, chocolate makes everything better. Don't let anyone tell you it doesn't. And then the third thing you do is you pick yourself up and you face forward and you move on. Because let me tell you, there's always another audition around the corner. Now, I like to also say those things to parents because if you're a student, parents, you've got to know your student's going to be kind of devastated. Let them cry. Don't tell them, oh, don't feel bad. That doesn't help anything. Of course, they're going to feel bad. You go buy them the chocolate shake. I promise that will help. And then you help them focus and move forward. Um, my hope for everybody is that every audition you take is a positive one. Every audition you take, you make it. You get first chair. Life is great. You get in the New York Philharmonic. Um, but the truth of the matter is life doesn't always work that way. If you do have an experience where you blow it, let me just tell you, now you're part of the club. Most of us professional musicians were in that club. <laughs> We've had a situation like that. So um, being part of the club is kind of fun, right? So just to recap, the things I want you to remember, I want you to figure out what makes you nervous in this world. I want you to figure out how your body reacts to the nerves. And I want you to recreate that in your practice sessions. That's gonna all right, that right there is 90% of the, of the audition taking process. I want you to consider cutting back on the sugar and caffeine. 
I want you to get your head screwed on straight when it comes to that warm-up room. Do not let other people psych you out. Do not let yourself psych yourself out. Did that make sense? Um, find a quiet space. Practice deep breathing. Don't get there too early. Go in and do the very best thing you possibly can. And then when you're done, I want you to look at those results. I do want to remind you those results do not define you. If you get first chair in Allstate in your state, congratulations. But there's still a million other people out there that are great and you still have a lifelong learning ahead of you. If you don't make it whatsoever, I'm really sorry for you, but it doesn't define you. You still worked hard. You just picked yourself up and go for the next audition. I hope all that helped give you some really good tips and tricks for taking auditions. Um, and I, like I said, I hope you get them all. My name is Anna Huthmaker. I'm with Huthmaker Violins. I am going to make this video available on the Huthmaker Violins YouTube channel. So thank you guys so much. Now go knock the top off your next audition.